Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So you might have noticed you have hymnals now. Mm -hmm. This being said, please sing and sing with vigor. So please stand and let us sing together. Gather us in, found at number 303. I guess that's kind of appropriate to enter, end it with that, that verse, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll also be uh, doing the sign of peace also, but I'll also ex be explaining some of the important uh, meanings behind that sign of peace as we move along. Maybe I'll just have some articles in the, in the uh, bulletin also along with it, because it's a right in itself and, and the importance of it and the gift of what that uh, sign of peace means. But as we prepare to, uh, <clears throat> maybe I should also say, it's a, there's a lot of good things happening, but there's always, it's also been a tough week. There's a lot of people that really need our prayers and are asking for our prayers. Uh, one of them that we can pray for is uh, Deb Lieberg. Deb Lieberg is the bishop's secretary, uh, and she's also our chancellor for our diocese. Uh, her husband passed away this week, uh, Jerry, so please keep her and her family in prayer and everybody up at the chancery. But as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore
and let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of the drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with the great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all of Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are not hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are not weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and insult you and announce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you all speak well of you. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. This week, of course, we have the Beatitudes from Luke. But it's a segue also into next week's gospel about the love of one, one's enemy, and that will be the continuation from even from where we leave off from today. But we're always learning more about ourselves, aren't we? About who we are and who God is, our relationship with him. Some of the, one of the things that, I, that caught my attention just a uh, a couple hours ago is, is at, as I was reflecting upon these Beatitudes from Luke and the way in which we're le being led up into the Lenten season. How much are these Beatitudes meant to inspire us, to lead us, to prepare us into that Lenten season? But there's many other things that we can have with these Beatitudes, especially these, this set from Luke. It's a little bit different than the one from Matthew. Matthew is the most common beatitude, set, uh, set of beatitudes that we have. But with Luke's, and most commentators do it, they, they compare that uh, Luke's beatitudes along into, with uh, Matthew's set of beatitudes. Those two versions. One of the things that we can notice right away, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> One of the things that we can notice right away is that Jesus in Matthew's account gives his Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. In today's version from Luke, we hear that it is on the plain. There's many different ways where we can compare and contrast the two Beatitudes. But hopefully people will also take some time to compare it along with today's first reading from Jeremiah how we prepare ourselves, not only for the Lenten season, but how we come here each, each day for, for Mass and to work, work through it and to read upon those readings before we even come here. But to see the way in which those things affect us, not only at our surface, but at a deeper level, because we can look at Matthew ver version and we can see that it is he is speaking to a mixed community, that community that was uh, familiar with the Jewish traditions. Whereas here in Luke, 
his audience is mostly Gentile. With a di uh, with the difference, we see the difference the audiences make and how those beatitudes are presented to us, and to see their sought after effects. It makes a difference to whom we're speaking to, doesn't it? We can look around in the congregation. We can see the different people that are here, the different lifestyles people have, the different educations people have. A priest has a different education than what the lawyers do, or the doctors, or an engineer, or the many other people. There's even variations within that educations and what the, how they're educated. And it all depends on how, how it affects different people in different ways. Much less the way in which people grasp things and the way in which they learn. It comes to people in different ways. Some people are better, grasp things better by reading, others by listening, others by that hands-on experiences. But one of the things with, with our, our Beatitudes for today is Notice it's Jesus. He has just picked out his disciples, the 12 disciples. And Jesus is standing there in front of them, giving them these beatitudes, these blessings, and these woes. What must have been like to be with Jesus at that moment? What must have been like for those disciples standing there before him as he proclaimed these Beatitudes. <clears throat> what was it that they needed to learn? We see a couple of different things in it. And one of the things that a couple of the commentators had pointed out is that personal use of the you and now in Luke's version of the Beatitudes. It's directed, more direct, isn't it, towards the individual, of course. Luke was presenting it to his uh, audience at his time, but he's also presenting it to us. Jesus is presenting it to his disciples, directly to his disciples. Commentators will also note that the blessing was, was focused, the blessed was focused on the physical needs of the poor. But who are that, the poor? Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. And now he has his disciples who went in front of him and to whom he's speaking to. And he's telling them that it's going to be tough. The many different things that they're going to have to go through. To see the way in which God affects people. The way in which Jesus was affecting his disciples and what he was asking them to do. He was trying to enlighten their hearts and minds. There's many different ways in which we can become enlightened by Christ so that we can do different things in our lives. One of those things that I remember, and I, re I know the effect of it afterwards, I'm not sure what year it was, but I remember listening to some tapes, cassette tapes in my pickup truck, and I wasn't, must have been on a weekend, because I wasn't going to work, and it was in the summertime. But I remember driving up County Road EA, and I was listening to a tape by Father John Harden. Father John Harden was a Jesuit, and he was a catechist. And as I was listening to the tape, it was a little bit above me. And as I was listening to it, I kept rewinding it, trying to get an understanding of it, trying to see what he meant and the light that he was trying to bring to my mind and through that cassette and that talk. And it just, I just wasn't getting it. And as I was driving up County Road A, all of a sudden I came to right where County Road G intersects on it, and all of a sudden the light bulb went off in my head. I got it. But I still can't put it into words. I had to pull off over on the side of the road by, uh, by Danielson's field there. And I had to stop and just think about what, what had just come into my head. It was a knowledge from God and how great he is and where I am. It was that enlightenment, that beauty of who he is. 
And I had to take a few moments and to recognize him. It was just a quick flash, but it's a knowledge about him. What effect did that have? I'm sure as I moved on in my life, and a few years later, I don't, can't remember how, I don't know, I can't remember the span of time that it was, I would be called into the seminary. I would have to prepare myself for six years. How do you financially support yourself for six years? I'd never done it before, but I sold half of my property, thinking that would be enough of it. And I'm sure God made it a lot easier because he showed me his beauty. He implanted a knowledge in my mind. I can't explain it. It's that encounter with Christ. The disciples are having their first encounters with Christ. And he's saying to them, blessed are you. Or uh, let me say, I, I got the wrong ones now. <laughs> Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Notice how it's matched up with the woes that are down below it. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. God is asking us not to be physically poor, but he is asking us not to be physically attached to all the things of the world, isn't he? How do we grasp onto things? Where are those addictions that we have in this world that we just can't let go of? That's what he's trying to get across to us. Blessed are you who are now weeping. For you will laugh. It isn't a weeping like that, that we're just sitting there crying. But it's recognizing all the things in the world, the way in which people don't see God. And how is it that we can bring that light and that life of Christ, that life of God, into their lives? Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Matches up with it. God wants to work in our lives. He wants to bring his light into our lives. And the many different ways where we can go through these beatitudes. Because in some way, we're always hanging on to those four things, isn't it? That honor, that wealth, that power, that pleasure. We have to examine those things and break them down. But it's going to be one of those things that we're hanging on to the most in our lives. But how is it that we're allowing God to work in our lives, to pull us away from those things? We can't take it all on at once, otherwise it'll be too much for us. But as we prepare for a Lenten season, what are those things, those one or two things that are going to help us along in and through our lives to separate ourselves from this world and to know that there is something better up there waiting for us? God is preparing us just like he was preparing his disciples. May we continue to grow in that richness and that understanding of the love that he has for us. Let's rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Yeah. 
him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son was adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, who sent his own Son for our salvation, let us offer our prayers. For the church. May the Lord strengthen her in her mission to be a beacon of hope <clears throat> for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord our for our world and its leaders, may all people be treated with dignity that they deserve as God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord our for all participating in the RCIA program, may God fill them with the Spirit and also Help them to recognize the Spirit's gift, which will be bestowed on them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our participation in the mission of Christ, that through the synodal journey together, we grow in our shared responsibility of the mission that is entrusted to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For families in difficult circumstances, may God strengthen them to trials and comfort them in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our military, first responders and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all gathered here, may God create in each one of us a contrite spirit that is pleasing to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who have died, May they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom by the communion of saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For Lorraine Cowden, who we remember at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Please pause to add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Please join in our vocation prayer. O oh God. God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives in serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's also pray for the people that will be gathering on Tuesday for the Synod here at, at uh, Nativity in the gathering space there. That the Lord continue to enrich and lighten our hearts and the minds, our minds, in a way in which he wish, not only wishes to lead nativity, but also the Diocese of Superior and the larger church throughout the world. Let us pray to Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Joel and Sherry will be coming up at the end of the Mass to give us a little talk on, about the synod. Loving God, source of all wisdom, we humbly ask that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
During the preparation of the gifts, our song is Prayer of St. Francis, found at 528. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Benedict and St. Basil, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Our communion song is Bread of Life, found at number 354.
And please remain seated for the prayer after communion. <laughs> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Joe and Sherry up. Good evening. My name is Joseph Abel, and this is my wife, Sharon. We are parishioners here at the Nativity of Our Lord Parish. Good things come in threes. The origin of that saying is not exactly known, but it's hypothesized that as the people of Europe in the Middle Ages organized themselves into small towns and villages, they created the process of town councils and town meetings. It was expected that these town councils would meet at least three times a year. And they met to discuss the concerns of the village or the town and their future plans. In that same spirit of cooperative, forward-looking discussion, we come tonight with three good things from Pope Francis and Bishop Powers. The three good things are two powerful questions and an invitation to you. First, the two powerful questions. Pope Francis and Bishop Powers want to know what you personally believe. The Holy Spirit is calling our parish our diocese, and the larger church to become? The second powerful question, what do you personally believe is our role in making that future church come now? The third good thing, an invitation. So we are tonight extending to all of you an invitation to come this Tuesday, February 15th at 6 p.m. to discern and discuss the answers to these questions. This is our chance to participate in Pope Francis's Worldwide Synod, or Gathering Together of the People of God. That's what a synod really is to listen for the Holy Spirit's guidance to our church today. Your input in these discussions will be gathered on Tuesday evening and formatted as a report of the insights of our parish and St. John's and Pelican. We will share our parish response, all those responses, into a report at a diocesan synod listening session to be held on Saturday, March 19th at Holy Family in Woodruff. And Joe and I will be there for that to turn in our responses. All of the parish reports presented at the diocesan listening sessions, all of them, will be brought to Bishop Powers, who will then pass our diocesan ideas to the United States Bishops' Conference, who in turn will then pass it on to Pope Francis. Our parish and diocesan input will be used by Bishop Powers in the planned Bishops' Synod with Pope Francis in October of 2023. So Pope Francis and Bishop Powers really want to hear from us he wants to hear from the many people, as many, many people as possible. So please, search your hearts and see if you can't come and be a part of this plan. This Tuesday, here, right here, we'll be in the back narthex in the lobby in the back. And um, we hope to see you all. And we hope that you will join in the dialogue. 
we will meet in the church vestibule at 6 p.m. If you're unable to attend, you can still participate by going to the Synod portal where you can put your ideas and your answers to the questions in that type of format. If you are a parent and you're worried on such short notice that you might not be able to come because you have children, babysitting will be provided that evening. We sincerely hope that you will be able to join us this Tuesday night. Peace and all good things to you. We hope to see you then. Thank you, Joel and Sherry. You know, one of the things I couldn't help but notice also, too, and one of the things that I picked up with, with the different talks about the Synod, it's also that gathering, that gathering that they had up in the upper room. At 5.15 is Tuesday's Mass, and it'll be following right after that Tuesday Mass to think about what took place in that upper room and how the disciples were fed. And then they, were, of course, they were taught many other different things after that. So just something else to think about. And it really, truly is a blessing to be able to, to have so much uh, input into the larger church. <clears throat> uh, also, just a reminder that uh, Nativity School is now open for registration for the, 20, for the 2022 and 2023 school year. Uh, uh, I don't think script is available for today. Also, just uh, re also, it's uh, we're in the National Marriage Week. It ends on Monday, the 14th, and of course, it's a celebration of not only married couples, but of also the family and the way in which God blesses a family, enriches a family in so many different ways. So, have a great Valentine's Day, everybody, and please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace, to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. As we go forth, let us sing together, Lead Me, Lord, found at number 739. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. Say they shall